Hey guys, welcome to ExcelForNoobs.com. In this video tutorial series, I'm going to show you, uh, I'm basically going to go over cell reference with Excel formulas. I'm going to describe all the different types of cell reference, um, cell references, and go into a decent amount of detail. Okay, so the three most basic types of cell reference you're probably somewhat familiar with are relative, absolute, and mixed cell reference. <clears throat> They're really all the same, except for they do get into a little bit more detail. Um, anyway, what a relative cell reference is, is basically when you when you re, uh, enter in a formula to a cell, you're going to refer to cells. So right here I'm entering in a formula, and this is going to be relative cell reference. Let me zoom in for you. Okay, here I'm entering it um, equals cell C5, which I could also say one cell to... One cell to the left plus two cells above minus one cell above. That's the way I like to think of relative cell reference. One cell to the left plus two cells above minus one cell above. Okay, so no matter where we copy and no matter what uh, where we copy and paste this formula or where we fill it, because it's using relative cell reference, it's always going to do one cell to the left plus one cell above minus or plus two cells above minus one cell above I can copy and paste that right here and if I enter in data one cell to the left some more one cell above and one cell two cells above and one cell above my result should be a thousand and there it is no matter what, it's the same when you're using relative cell reference. <clears throat> okay, so I think you have an understanding of what relative cell reference is there. Now I'm going to move on to absolute cell reference. Um, what absolute cell reference is, is um, you're locking your cell reference versus um, making it relative. So, um, again, I'll just use an example to describe what rel uh, absolute cell reference is. Uh, here you can see that I have a consolidated um, income statement with some assumptions here and I'd say this is more of like a pro forma or a um, sales for or a forecast. Uh, <clears throat> so here I have variable expenses and our variable ex expenses we're gonna assume are a percentage rate of our sales so equals you can see I have the cell our assumptions here my variable expense rate times my sales okay now if I were to drag this over using autofill you can see that I run into some problems there's no numbers entered in here all we have is zeros in the number format that got carried over so did our formula but the problem is is that just as this formula referred to cell B12 times cell B3 we have this relative cell reference cell C, cell uh, C12 times cell C3, and you can see it's C12 times cell C3. We don't want that because we have our variable expense right here. So we want to we want to um, lock our cell reference and make it absolute. <clears throat> the way we do that is when I enter the formula equals our variable expense rate. I'm pressing F4 and that makes an absolute cell reference. You can see that it inserts the dollar symbol before the column letter and before the row number times our sales and we're going to leave that relative because when we when we fill this in over we have different sales that are also dragged over so we're not going to lock that in. Okay? Again, equals variable expense rate cell B12 we're gonna lock that in because our rate remains the same times sales which changes from quarter to quarter <clears throat> okay our tax rate the same thing our tax rate is gonna be our tax rate of 34 percent now I'm pressing F4 or I could insert the dollar signs manually um, so and um, and uh, tax rate times 
sales minus overhead minus variable expenses because we're being taxed on our on our <clears throat> earnings before interest and tax so that was a formula for that of course we don't have interest in there okay so now I can fill that over and there you can see that we have different tax rates because our sales are different for each our sales and our variable expenses change so there's our tax rate and then net, net income simple sales minus all of our expenses including our tax expense and then drag that over and you can see we have net income for each quarter okay then we also have mixed cell reference here I have um, an X and Y axis of numbers 1 through 10 I'm gonna do our times tables here equals cell A2 times cell B2 all right let me zoom in actually so you can just so you can see more of what I'm doing. All right, equals cell A2 times cell B2. Okay, so you can see we have um, our two axes here. We want to lock this on column A. We want this to remain locked in column A, but we don't want it to. Um, we don't want it to change rows whenever we fill in this formula. And the same thing goes for row one. So I just insert a dollar symbol before row, um, row one. So you can see I'm using mixed, a mix of absolute and relative. I can also um, just press F4, and you can see I'm pressing F4, and it's cycling through all the different types of cell reference. Okay, so I'm going to keep it there. All right, and then as we fill this in, we should have our times tables. And there we go. Okay, so that's the mixed cell reference. Those are the three types of cell reference. Now I'm going to go into a little bit more detail. Um, for example, when we um, use, refer to cells within a table. Okay, let's just assume I want to find it. Even though I can insert a total row into an Excel table that I have here, I'm going to just go ahead and start entering a formula into the column directly to the right any row and I want you to notice how our cell references look how the cell addresses are when they're within a table so you can see we have the at symbol here it automatically fills it in when I press enter and adds us a new table column but I want you to see that again. Plus, I'm adding the tax for each quarter there, basically, is what I was doing. Um, and <clears throat> you can see that we have the at symbol. What the at symbol means is this row. So that stands for row six. And then quarter one obviously stands for the quarter one column. So that's saying. What that's saying is row six, quarter one, plus the at symbol again stands for the row, row six, quarter two, and that's the cell address for Excel tables. We press enter and it's automatically filled in. All right, if we refer to a cell within a table, you can see there I'm referring to random cells. These calculations may not make sense, I'm just doing them. And you can see that it's just the regular cell address, C6 plus D6. And that works fine. Um, however, a lot of times having the names of tables um, helps us with understanding the formula if we were just reading the formula. Okay, so something we can do, this table, I'm going to give it a name real quick. If you don't know how to name a table, you're going to learn real quick. I'm going to name it. Todd's table. Okay, so now my table has a name. Now, if I'm going to insert a formula, I can um, enter it by the table name, and um, Excel will provide me with a list. So we'll start entering a sum formula. And now I'm going to just start by hitting T. And then you can see through this list, we have a bunch of different functions that we could enter as an argument, but we also have 
<clears throat> table two listed here.